The greatest threat humanity has ever known has endured and thrived in the galaxy for over 65 million years. They are the necromorphs, born of a dead organic material via a viral pathogen. They infect, reanimate, then spread across the entirety of a civilization. This is accomplished by means of the marker, a double helix obelisk with the necromorphic genome etched into its surface. It is the markers that are the pillars of civilization for many worlds, unknowingly advancing the development of their dominant species in order for the necromorphs to cull their organic tissue in mass. For this to be accomplished, the marker first disrupt the population by means of telepathic manipulation. Hello there, and welcome to another Dead Space Lore video, where we explore the psychological effects of the markers. The necromorphic conquest of a civilization begins with the discovery of the Black Marker, an ancient relic often pre-placed on the homeworld of an advanced race, driving their progress, enhancing their biological structure, and feeding them hidden knowledge of the universe. As time goes on, the planet begins to populate from a few million to tens of billions. During this time, the Marker waits in silence for the time to come. And when it does, its influence will be felt across the world as its blackened surface is replicated. Its design copied into what will become known as the Red Markers. Together, they create a cosmic network across millions of miles and thousands of light years, all in an attempt to reach the hierarchy of the necromorph leadership, the Brethren Moons. Once they receive the command, the markers begin to emit a strange, mysterious signal, something unexplainable, yet intoxicating. Unknowingly, it enters the minds of those within its reach. Its influence, while affecting everyone differently, is manipulative, disruptive, and sinister. It is the beginning phase of the necromorphic attempt to call a civilization. It's an important first step as those immobilized by the effects of the marker become unable to organize, unable to defend themselves. It further creates a situation where homicidal tendencies arise in the victims. Sometimes, however, it's their fears that drive them to the point of becoming completely mad. The hallucinations caused by the markers are depicted as being highly disturbing and involve visions of grotesque creatures, violent images, and twisted, nightmare-like scenarios. Some common effects include visual hallucinations, where victims may see things that aren't actually there. Commonly, these are visions of the deceased calling them to join them by means of unification with the necromorphs. Auditory hallucinations, where victims may hear voices, whispers, or screams that have no source. Paranoia, where those who experience it become convinced they are being watched or hunted, or that those around them are not who they appear to be. And finally, mental breakdowns, where people overwhelmed by the intensity of the hallucinations may lose touch with reality, becoming violent or otherwise unstable. The psychological effects are unpredictable and often bizarre, all as a means to help the necromorph accomplish their goal. The Concordance Extraction Corporation is the fifth largest corporation in the Earth colonies. It goes uncontested as the largest mining and deep space extraction company. Its Planet Cracker series of ships have brought about a new age for mankind, starved of valuable resources. After amassing vast wealth, the CEC has spread its Planet Cracker operations to the frontier. Against the will of EarthGov, the CEC have become known for their unsanctioned mining operations. Well, consequently, one of them would lead to the red marker of Aegis 7. Of the colonists stationed there was Sam Caldwell. In Dead Space Extraction, Sam Caldwell participated as a member of the extraction dig team to remove the red marker that would then be transported to the USG Ishimura overhead in orbit. While attempting to remove the marker from its pedestal, the dig team consequently activated it. 
Without warning, the obelisk unleashed a powerful energy wave that spread across the entire colony, disrupting life support and communications. Most importantly, it damaged one of the many tethers required for the Ishimura's planet cracking operation. It would be Sam's team to be ordered to repair the tether, so operations may resume. Into the depths of the colony, they journeyed the route forward to the tether. Eventually, they stumbled across one of their fellow engineers committing a homicidal act. He seemingly had lost his mind. In a fit of rage and wielding a rock saw, he attacked, resulting in Sam's team firing on him. While recuperating from the shocking events, they were attacked once again by a group of deranged workers. All along the route, they would witness horrific encounters, such as suicidal victims and murderers, all while slowly succumbing to madness. While at first thought, the immediate reaction would be to seek help, the colony was in peril. Sectors were beginning to lose oxygen. The team had to repair the tether, fix life support, and deal with the chaos when they were able. But in the end, Sam would find himself alone, isolated. From every direction, he was assaulted by homicidal colonists, which led him to accidentally killing one of his own. It wouldn't be long until he himself became fatally wounded by a gunshot from a security officer's pistol. Then it is revealed Sam unknowingly had fallen under the influence of the marker. The bizarre killings and monsters he witnessed were all hallucinations. In reality, those he believed to be terrifying creatures attempting to take his life were in fact innocent workers. He had killed them and his team. His story wouldn't be the only incident, as since the discovery of the marker, many will undergo the same torment. The psychological effects caused by the signal emitted by the marker is meant to disrupt. Many individuals will immediately succumb to the effects, but in some rare cases, people are naturally able to resist. In the case of Nicholas Kuttner, his hallucinations were the opposite. An ex-Marine turned CEC security officer, Nicholas arrived at age of seven after the events of Dead Space with Isaac Clark. His orders returned to the surface, locate remnants of the now destroyed red marker and retrieve them. It would be a dangerous mission as the planet had become highly unstable. A separate team of engineers were required to prevent the planet from collapsing. As the team separated, the retrieval team further dispersed, allowing its members to individually scout for signs of the marker. It would be Nicholas that would discover the red marker fragment. Unaware of the dangers posed by it, the security officer picked it up with his hands, causing it to activate. His psyche was immediately overwhelmed, causing him to go nearly insane. He began to see manifestations of his daughter who had died just weeks prior. Without question, he believed that she was alive. Then came the monsters that tormented her. Desperate to save his daughter, Nicholas believed he was fighting mysterious creatures that lurked on the surface of the planet. He saw them everywhere, especially among his crewmates. Arriving to the other engineering team, he surprised them when he attacked one of them and then sabotaged the machine brought from orbit to stabilize the planet. His actions nearly killed both teams, as well as their ship in orbit. The events would leave them stranded in the debris field of the planet, as the marker fragment would continue to plague the crew. While restrained to sickbay, Nicholas was quite calm. While he no longer seen others as monsters, he still saw and believed he was talking to his daughter. It is one of the few instances where an individual, while still under the effects of the marker, slowly found harmony with it. Nicholas was no longer tormented by it. He even became quite confused as to why he was restrained. He became calm and collective. During the necromorph outbreak, it would be his hallucinations on more than one occasion that led the survivors of the ship to safety. It shows that the effects of the marker are unpredictable. 
while some people are overwhelmed initially, some slowly adapt to their condition, at least for a time. Since it would be Nicholas's confinement in combination with his hallucinations that would lead to his death. Another strange occurrence with Nicholas is that even after the destruction of the marker shard, he still experienced hallucinations, suggesting that once an individual has become affected by the marker, its effects are permanent. What changes an individual can undergo seemingly varies from homicidal, suicidal, dementia, and paranoia to a sense of enlightenment. After Nicholas Kuttner, the marker fragment fell into the hands of Nolan Strauss. Nolan was a dedicated servant to the Church of Unitology. His tour to age of seven was specifically to study the marker itself. For a time, he was aware of the vast knowledge being fed to him through visions, using his logic to recognize his slipping mental state. Unaware, like many others, he was being influenced and manipulated. Nolan, while at normal, had understood that the marker had been attempting to communicate with him. His unitologist beliefs became amplified. He received a clarity of the universe not many would understand. As he spoke, it was with a sense of passion and unwavering devotion. He hadn't realized he had unleashed a necromorphic pathogen throughout the ship. Seeing the error of his ways, Nolan attempted to warn the captain but the captain had become consumed with his responsibilities. With the destruction of Aegis 7, the ship's drive had become damaged, stranding them in deep space. With the only engineer losing his brother to the mentally deranged Nicholas Kuttner, they were locked in a heated exchange of words. Nolan saw no other way but to escape. First, he had to save his wife and daughter resting in his quarters. Carefully, he avoided the necromorphs that had begun annihilating the crew. While he finally arrived at his quarters, it was too late. The necromorphs were already present, and without hesitation, he killed them. Not realizing, he was hacking his wife and daughter to pieces. Later, we would discover this created a trauma in him, so where he attempted to prevent himself from remembering. A part of him, despite the marker's influence, knew what he had done. In the end, it would be Nolan's knowledge of the marker that would destroy the necromorphs and save himself with three other survivors, which included Nicholas. His physical encounter with the marker provided him with insight into what he believed was the coming of the unitologist prophecy. The reality, it used him to continue the calling that began on Aegis 7. The extraterrestrial invasion of the mind is one of the most terrifying and frightening aspects of dead space. While the necromorphs alone are the things of nightmares, at least in a way, they can be killed. But if you're unaware, under the influence, seeing what isn't real, hearing the unheard, you'll find yourself completely vulnerable or even harming those you care about the most. Thank you for watching. If you watched this far, please consider subscribing to the channel or leaving a comment and I'll catch you next time.